After being suspended just over a year ago due to allegations of sexual assault, Jay Sinatra Wan said last week that he is ready to return to competitive Valorant. But since his initial tweets, the story's gotten a lot more complicated than just one controversial player trying to make a comeback. Let's break this whole story down. Hey, before we get into this video, I just wanted to warn you that we are going to be talking about sexual assault. If that is too much for you, then it's just a warning. You can click off now. Okay, so this all started back in March 2021. At the time, Cleo Hernandez, Sinatra's ex-girlfriend, accused Sinatra of sexual assault and abuse. She published documents and detailed allegations that Sinatra was emotionally abusive towards her, that he pressured her to have sex without her consent, and that at times where she did consent to sex, Sinatra at times engaged in non-consensual acts that caused her pain. She also published an audio recording, allegedly of her and Sinatra having sex. On the recording, you can hear Cleo saying no several times, while the other voice, allegedly Sinatra's, can be heard insisting they continue. The next day, Riot put out a statement saying that they had launched an investigation into these allegations, and Sinatra's team, Sentinels, tweeted out a statement saying that he was suspended while the investigation was ongoing. Several months later, in May, Riot released a competitive ruling in which they suspended Sinatra for six months and required him to complete professional conduct training before returning to play. Remember that last part because it's gonna be really important going forward. In their ruling, Riot stated that they could not come to a definitive conclusion on the allegations, meaning that they weren't 100% sure of whether or not Sinatra committed the acts that he was accused of. To be clear, this doesn't mean the assault didn't happen. Riot is not a court of law. They don't have access to police or government resources. It just means their investigation was inconclusive based on what resources they had access to. They noted that it was a complicated issue to investigate and really difficult to judge. Riot also said they reserve the right to reopen the investigation if new information comes to light from either party or from law enforcement. In the statement, Riot noted that Sinatra did not cooperate with the investigation to Riot's standards. They stated that Sinatra, quote, misrepresented certain facts, made false statements, and did not cooperate with the investigation in the way expected of a professional Valorant esports player. Since then, the story has mostly faded from the public eye. Sinatra's suspension was up in September 2021, but no team signed him. He is still a streamer and content creator for Sentinels, and he's active on social media, but he hasn't played a competitive match in over a year. And then, on April 12th, Sinatra tweeted this, quote, It's been a year since I was forced to step back from competitive play. In that time, I have learned a lot about myself and grown as a person. I am now ready for a return to competitive play and will be starting tryouts this week. There's a lot going on in that tweet, and it drew a ton of attention from all over the esports world. Plenty of big names in the scene tweeted out support for Sinatra's return, while others were quick to point out that Sinatra was accused of sexual assault, and it felt odd to give him a hero's welcome back into Pro Valorant. But the controversy didn't stop there. Two days after his initial tweet, Sinatra released a tweet longer in which he stated that he was never charged with a crime and that Riot cleared him to return to competitive play in January. An hour later, he published a screenshot of that email he received from Riot in January, which does show that someone at Riot gave Sinatra a statement in writing saying that he was clear to play in professional Valorant tournaments in case any teams were unsure of his eligibility. But there was also something else concerning and damning in that email. See, remember back in the May 2021 competitive ruling when Riot said that Sinatra had to complete professional conduct training? Well, in this email, the writer implies that Sinatra never did any training at all. The writer states, quote, for additional context, the training was supposed to focus on cooperating with investigation. However, we feel like you already know most of the information covered in the training. As an aside, it seems completely absurd to me that Riot determined that Sinatra needed professional conduct training so that he could better cooperate with investigations in the future, and then decided that he just didn't have to do it. And then they said that he didn't need it because he already knew what they were going to say, which can't be true because they literally said he needed it in the first place. Obviously, I am not the only person who found that contradiction to be extremely confusing. And just two hours later, Cleo Hernandez, the woman who made the original allegations, tweeted out that she was disgusted by the fact that Sinatra didn't complete the training and said that she had reached out to Riot. She also alleged that Riot told her he lied during the investigation alleging that the investigation was deemed inconclusive because they simply could not trust his side of the story. The next day, Riot released another statement, this time from their president of esports, John Needham, in which he stated that Sinatra will in fact have to complete his training. Needham writes, quote, 
We have informed Mr. Wan that contrary to the communication and in accordance with the competitive ruling, he is required to undergo professional conduct training. We have begun working with Mr. Wan to complete his training. The training will focus on one, conducting oneself as a professional, two, complying with the rules and regulations, and three, complying with investigations. Riot reiterated that the allegations are severe and that they take them seriously. They also said that they're looking into how it happened that Sinatra didn't have to do his training, and they're trying to make sure that that doesn't happen in the future. Which all basically means we're back at square one. Given Riot's initial ruling, it's likely that Sinatra will not be eligible to compete again until he completes his professional conduct training. Just after Sinatra's original tweet, Dot Esports reported that Sentinels were practicing without Zoms, and that Sinatra was allegedly one of the potential candidates to replace him on the starting lineup ahead of Valorant Stage 2. It's hard to say whether or not Sinatra will complete his training in time to be actually eligible for Stage 2 challengers, which means we're probably kicking this whole issue down the road for a few months. The Valorant community, Esports as a whole, we are going to revisit the story, because in a few months, or whenever he finishes this training that Riot has set out for him, Sinatra is going to want to come back again. And when that happens, we are probably going to relitigate this whole thing all over again. But we already know what each party has to say about what happened. Cleo says she was sexually assaulted. Sinatra says that that didn't happen. Riot says that Sinatra lied to them. And Cleo says that those lies were so bad they couldn't use his testimony as a credible source. Sinatra's defense is that no evidence was found of him committing a crime. And while he was a shitty boyfriend, he says he only hurt Cleo emotionally. Putting aside all this bullshit about Riot being unable to actually enforce their competitive rulings, all those things that each party said are still going to be out there the next time Sinatra tries to come back.